Hi everyone and welcome to the 2507 lab tutorials. My name's Adam and uh, the first thing you need to get started today is uh, by downloading the Chrome browser if you don't have it already. So you can just head to your favorite browser and basically install, uh, download the Chrome installer and install that to your hard drive. So once that's done, we have to just change a couple flags. So you're going to head over to type in the top bar here Chrome colon slash slash flags slash pound sign enable hyphen NACL. Once that's done, you have to, the first one that shows up should be the native client and you need to switch that from disabled to enabled. It's set to disabled by default. So you're going to have to enable it on your own. From there, it'll ask you to relaunch your browser somewhere down here at the bottom of your screen and you're going to relaunch your browser. So from there, we can now get, navigate to everycircuit.com. And once there, you will see on the right side of your screen, a Chrome button. And this will allow you to use the application directly in your browser rather than downloading any standalone software. So you can, Click on that. From here, then you'll see the sign up page. So the username you're going to pick for this course is going to be your last name, followed by the last four digits of your student number. So in my case, it would be Heffernan underscore 5570. I'm going to sign up with whatever email I want and your password is going to be a simple password that you're going to have to share with the TA. So make sure it's not anything that you're um, using for your Facebook or anything like that. Make sure it's something simple that you're willing to share with the TAs. In my case, I just made my password simple. And then go ahead and click the sign up button here after you pick that you're a student. Once that's done, it'll tell you that your free trial will expire in one day. Go ahead and close that for now. So from here, we see a blank canvas and then we can navigate over to our new newly created account in here in the top right. And that has our account name and it has a drop down with profile settings and the sign out menu. You're going to want to go ahead and click on the profile menu. Once you're inside the profile menu, you should see a thing on the bottom right here to enter your license key. This is a license key that was provided to you by your professor should be for access, give you access to this tool for the whole semester. So go ahead and click on that with a left click. And that'll bring up another type of menu where you actually copy and paste your license key and enter it right into that box. So in this case, I'll just blank it out. And I'll go ahead and copy and paste the license key that was provided in that box. So you'll see a little pop up on the screen that says your license key was activated. And if you go back into your profile, you'll see that you've got the full version rather than you're on a trial. So from here, we can go and show you how to design our basic circuits and show you how to use some basic components. So as you can see on your screen, every circuit has what looks like to be a digital breadboard type of thing. So this digital breadboard has certain nodes and it will only let you place components in those individual nodes. And if you are placing components too closely together or if that component's not able to go in that certain node, that you'll see every circuit will give you an error. So if we see, we place an ammeter and we can see it, it can't go right on the ground node. It can only go around it. So we can place it anywhere on our board but not actually directly on the ground node. 
So now let's take a look at the electrical components that we have access to while using every circuit. Some of these components may look familiar and others still may not, but uh, that doesn't matter because by the end of this course, you're probably gonna know most of them that are here. And if you don't, you're gonna know them from some of your other courses that you've taken, so. Um, so to place a component on the breadboard, we simply left click on that particular component so say I want to place um, a resistor and a capacitor and just make a simple filter circuit. I could do that. You can drag and drop the components and it will let you know exactly where you're able to put them and where the components are not allowed to go. So you see the red area when that component is not allowed to be dragged in that area, you can see it's, it's all good when the component is able to be dragged in that area. So if you want to, let's say, make a component horizontal rather than vertical, how would I do that? So that's the first thing that we'll look at. And that would be down here on the left-hand side of your screen. You're going to see this rotate button. You can either press this button or you can press the R button on your keyboard. It, it doesn't matter whatever suits you best if you like keyboard shortcuts or you like just the GUI version you can you can use whatever you want so there we just rotated that resistor now let's do the same thing with the capacitor there so let's rotate and we'll drag them just a little closer together and now if we want to make connections between a couple components let's say we have to just click on the individual nodes and a wire will be placed between the two nodes that we've um, designated to, to connect. So from here, we can put in a voltage source, let's say, to our circuit. And we'll connect that voltage source back to here. So last but not least, let's pull down a ground node out of the drop-down menu. And we'll place it on the negative side of our one kilohertz sine wave. Once we've done that, we now have two sets of analysis available to us. We either have AC analysis, which does a frequency sweep and will give you basically a, a simulated boat plot, perhaps. And the transient, however, will just give you the voltages and currents at certain nodes, and it will let you look at the voltage and the voltages at certain nodes. So this is basically the transient is acting like a like your scope would in your lab, whereas the AC is making your life easier, so you don't have to sweep through the large amount of frequencies, so you can get boat plots for your amplifiers and things like that. So first of all, let's run an AC analysis on this filter. And we can see this filter has the cutoff frequency of about 100 hertz from this graph. And if we were to go back now, which will rewind our whatever we've just done, we can rewind. And now we can also run the transient analysis. And this will give us a waveform of whatever we want to see. So say I wanted to see this waveform then I would go show waveform on the bottom left of the screen. If I click on that, it's gonna bring my waveform up in a different color. And it's gonna show me each individual node is going to be color coded with the wave that it corresponds to on the graph. So last but not least, let's say I wanted to bring up the wave that's being shown here. And obviously it's always at zero volt, so it's gonna stay at zero volt, but it's just, proof of concept that you can bring up as many waves as you want. This scope has basically unlimited amount of channels. So you can uh, probe wherever you want using, uh, using this tool, which makes it very, very handy and a lot more powerful than what you were doing per se in the lab. Um, the last couple of things that I will show you here before we call this tutorial a quits is just showing you some other type of things when it comes to flipping components. You can either do that with an F command, or you can click, again, on the bottom left, it's always possible, F, F. Um, the other couple things you'll have available to you are the settings tab, 
that's in the adjustment menu actually and that you can get to by just hitting a on your keyboard and if you're on a component that has an adjustable value you can either let's say adjust the fate phase the frequency the amplitude or the dc voltage as you can see here of this sine wave but there's many more parameters that you can change so for let's say a resistor you can only change the resistance obviously a capacitor just the capacitance but um, let's something like a BJT, you actually have a bunch of things available to you. You have the saturation current of that BJT, the forward beta, which is the value that you will be changing the most in this lab because it has to do with the, the beta value of, of your transistor. Um, the collector and the base resistance, which you guys really don't have to worry about per se for any anything practical in this course. Um, but yeah, so those are some of the parameters you can adjust and that's how you adjust them. You can rotate as well your BJT. Um, you can flip it so that the, the positive terminal is coming out the other side. Um, you can also delete a device by just clicking on the garbage can here. Uh, it's very powerful and there's um, umpteen things you can do with this piece of software. So we built our basic filter circuit. We've ran transient analysis on this circuit. We've also run our AC frequency sweep on this circuit. And now we're going to look at how to best save our files so that the TAs can view them later on. As we can see in the top right here, there's three different options for saving. Those are public, unlisted, and private. In this course, we are always going to make our circuits private. And that's so the TA can go into your account and just view them. The title of your circuit is always going to include the 2507 course code. So we'll start by putting that in. And then let's pretend like we've made a real circuit for a real lab. So let's say for instance, this was lab number four and we created, let's say the fixed bias circuit. So we'll go down here and we'll find the actual number coding for that circuit we will type in the lab number. So lab four, this would be. We will also follow that by the actual number that it is in the lab. So 4.1.1. And then we'll finish that with the actual name of the circuit. Just make sure you have that right. Last but not least, we will enter a description tag. And in this description tag, we will put our username which should be your last name followed by the last four digits of your student number. And once that description is in there, you can go ahead and click save. And this has saved it as a private file. So this private file can only be accessed by you and the TA. So long as you keep the file private only, and you only share your login information with your TA, only you and the TA will be able to access that information. So in the end, we went through how to create an account, how to set up a student license, how to save your files under the file structure required for this course, and also how to create a basic filter circuit in every circuit, run transient analysis, and run AC sweep. I hope all in all this video was helpful, and I guess we'll see you guys in the next video where we go over the BJT and the MOSFET lab. So we'll see you then.